survey points that was used to make contours for the old voyage maps, I assume. And we'll see that in, the mo in a moment. What I want to stress is that this three-dimensional model is really only going to be one facet of what we really want to do. And I think we really need to understand that there's a lot of people who may not be interested in something that feels like a computer game. But then on the other hand, we think it's a great way to motivate some people who may go for that. And so what I'm showing you, uh, maps draped on a 3D shape, always bear in mind that there will be a simple 2D map version of what we're going to look at. For people who want to, some people who are very happy and familiar with the map and then have a handle on the map, then it will be available in that form as well. So, I've got various items here and I'm going to load up one called Aberystwyth, and I'll just wait a moment for that to load up. While it's doing that, um, can I obviously you probably guessed that the environment that we're working in is straightforward on Internet Explorer 6 web browser. And so everything that we will be doing will be inside a web browser. And one of the advantages is that I think that that at least is a fairly familiar stuff for most people. And so already we see a 3D model. It's not a map draped on the model at the moment. And I'll keep using this word trade every time I talk about model with map, the word drape comes in between. We drape these maps over a wireframe model. And this is an aerial photograph. And we'll be able to choose different maps or different aerial photographs. Under here, I've got a little button called Tools. A little tiny icon there. I hope you can see it. It's so small up on the screen that says Layers. And we'll be able to load into this any layer, really, that, that um, might have come up with and giving it. And really, because we're only feeling our way and trying to see what we're doing, we've only really got one or two layers in here, but I'm going to switch immediately to the 1904 map. Now the um, 1904 map was an extend down here, so we've got a big blank piece of surface there to look at at the moment. If I look at other possible layers that we could um, switch on here at the moment, um, we could put on sort of contour layers. So this is the contour information that the, the shape that surface was, was generated from originally. I'm going to show you um, SMR records, a series of little map pins have now been switched on. And we just did this again to be some practice to see if we could do it, to see if we could make a connection between a model and an archive. And that connection, we will find, that can be made in all sorts of ways. But maybe the simplest and most understandable way is a map pin. Now, SMR, uh, I forget now the precise meaning of that abbreviation, but what it's referring to there is an ancient monuments database come from standard survey and that data set exists now all over the Wales. All the archaeological trusts have come together to format their information in a consistent way so that it can be shared across the whole of the country. And each one of these little map pins, they're very tiny, I know I can go and click on them. And wait for a moment. The data which you can't read, it's just far too small the text and it will be very dry. Um, stuff to read there anyway. Um, but what we would hope to see in here is a lot more interesting <coughs> and readable content. It doesn't only have to be um, text, it can be pictures, it can be sound. And perhaps we'll have a, look at a little bit more of that in a moment. But the top here, I've got a few little navigation controls, and these help us move around within the scene. But before I do that, I can get rid of some things. I'm going to turn off my contours, I'm going to turn off my, uh, my data points, my map pins, and I'm just going to move to a different view of the town. Um, I'm going to move to one Again, it's so small, the text up on that screen. That's saying that this is a pre-created viewpoint. 
It says Castle House, and in brackets next to it, which I can't even read with my nose up against it, it says the word fly. And I'll explain why it says fly in a moment. Now that doesn't uh, tell me very much. I don't know whether Mike can see anything when he's looking in there. But associated with this pre-created this, this pre viewpoint, I also have a picture that's been placed in the archive. And if I clicked on that picture, it will expand it to its full size. And what we're trying to achieve here is that we can create views within our model and have those views constructed at exactly the same point as whoever an observer or an artist or a photographer would have stood at the moment of creating that image. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is not a very good example I've just shown you. We'll have a look at some better ones of Old College or something like that in, in a moment. As well as using my pre-created viewpoints, if I just drag with my mouse on the table, I can move around along the surface. And the way my movement works is in two modes. At the moment, I'm in fly mode. If I go and click on the little icon of a man at the top here, and now drag, I've dropped out of fly mode, and it's taken my eye position and I set this up to say that my eye is 1.4 meters off the ground. So now as I move around on the surface of the model, my eye always goes up and down at exactly that height. Just go over the edge, and here you'll see that hopefully my eye goes down and so I'm down on the beach now. Another way of saying that is that in this little world where we're moving around, gravity exists. So if you switch gravity on, you walk on the ground and you can move around on the ground. Another way of moving around is to move back to fly mode, and I'm going to click on a little icon of an airplane, and I'm going to slide my viewpoint. And for some reason, this isn't working. Try it again. <clears throat> okay, don't know why I'm going to show you that it didn't work. I'm going to do something completely different and move on from that. Let's go and look at our college. So I've, I've uh, selected a predefined viewpoint now. It actually puts me out in the sea and it's out beyond where we've got any map data for, so I'm a bit hovering out in, in space. <coughs> and again, another image has appeared down on the right here. If I choose some other bits, I think I've got some old college from the south. I've got a number of images which um, we've got out of the archive. Another way in which I can move around is to use this little icon of an eye. If I take my little icon of an eye, I can just draw a little line anywhere on the surface of the ground, and my position will jump to there on the ground. If I now go and choose a position, what would this hill be? Pendinus right out here, wouldn't it? So if I wanted to go and stand right up on the top of Pendinus and look down this way, I can jump over onto Pendinus. I haven't got a lot of time to show you this now, but what we have in the interface is the ability of any casual user who will have logged onto this system and maybe registered themselves as an interested user, if they've got a photograph of their own which they've taken, which is really good, there'd be this little button, that like I say, I don't have it here now, where they would be able to upload that picture and it would join the collection in the archive. But what that picture would be would be part of their own personal archive of pictures of the town. It wouldn't be available to other uh, members of the public who came and looked. They would only see the ones that Mike or his team have chosen to publish and make sure. And again, any one of these pictures can be expanded. 
slight weakness in the software, I have now jumped somewhere else in the scene for which these pictures now don't apply. But I'm just pointing out to you how early days this is. We are just working out ideas here, things that we would like to do. 